Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery where every week we discuss any updates or speculation about the game. So if you want to keep up to date with content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So today, what we're we getting into, we're talking about prep for Wizards Unite. So we're going to be going through all the equipment, all the specs you're going to be needing to kind of think about having before you go into, you know, before Wizards Unite comes out. So make sure that you're fully prepared. So we're going to go into that. And also towards the end of the video, we're going to be talking about just how I've prepared, looking at my equipment that I've invested. I've probably invested about £500 in the past month in equipment that will hopefully improve the quality of my channel when going out, hopefully give you a good, good quality of content. And we'll just make it a little bit easier with some of the specs, some of the equipment that I have. So we're going through that. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, well let's get Okay, well let's get into it. So, let's start with the phone. You're going to want something that has AR capabilities. I'm currently using a Samsung S8 which will fully be powerful enough to do it. Some older phones obviously won't have AR features that you can't, you know, some really old phones can't even do the, you know, show you the AR in Pokémon Go. You have to be in the the, the kind of fixed mode. So, to get the enjoy, this game is going to probably have more AR capabilities than Pokemon Go. So to enjoy that, you're probably going to want a good phone. So if your contracts are coming up, in, if you're paying monthly, make sure to get them all set up. I've actually got one that ends in April. And I'm curious, I'm not sure what to do because I'm thinking maybe I should get a new phone or a new SIM and with another different thing which we'll come to in a second. Uh, but an S8 will, will be enough. Uh, when 5G comes in, you will need 5G capabilities, which are probably going to be on even newer phones. So I think the Samsung 10, was it, that was uh, shown at the MWC um, exposition show, whatever it was. So that has 5G capabilities. For things like your dueling Code Neon, if you've seen that, it's another video. Just check my other videos. It's in the past two weeks or something. And that has the ability to interact phone to phone so you can see where your enemy is, fire stuff at them, they can fire stuff back so they're aware of your region. And so like the full AR capabilities probably will require 5G and maybe things that are released later on when technology catches up. I think it was James from Expecto Go, if you haven't checked his channel out, go for it, it was in the description below. He mentioned that he thought maybe the reason why they you know, put off the 2018 release and change it to 2019 was so that technology ca could catch up and they could get the full show of the 5G capabilities with their AR. So phone is going to be an important feature if you're going to want to enjoy it. You might actually hold off on your contracts until you know the game releases and you can see you, know, you might get more 5G capability in, in a lot of other phones then. So it's something to think about going into it. I'm definitely thinking about it when it comes to April is my when my contract runs out on my phone. So we'll see what happens when it comes to that. But definitely, you know, standard is you want something that has AR capabilities in it. You also want something that has good battery life. I'm gonna come out way, look at some ways that later on of, of, of ways that can help you with that. Um, because games like Pokemon Go do rinse battery quite quickly. And it's really frustrating when, you know, if you've ever been out and your battery is on like 2% and you're fighting in a raid and you're just about to take it down and then battery goes. So you're probably going to want something that has a good battery life um, that can run the game pretty smoothly. And in, in terms of that, you know, capabilities of good phone will obviously determine how fast it runs. You know, glitches are probably going to be more present in phones that can't, you know, handle it. I know you might, my iPhone had a problem where whenever it, its memory became so full, the game would just crash every single day. So you're going to also want memory on your phone, something to think about, space for it, and, and then some so you've just got room to, you know, so it's you, you, your phone's not like overcrowded and it's affecting how it runs. So phone is a big thing. I do have a Samsung and I also have an iPhone. The reason I have two different types of phone is because of Apple and Android release dates for games. Usually it's different for each phone because they have different systems of way they, they go, they get uploaded. So Apple is a set base where you can only download from the Apple store. And that means that if it's released in another country, 
unless you do the workaround, which there is, which I will put a video on when it comes close to it, if that's the case, is there are ways that you can access other countries. But if you are in England and don't do that, you wouldn't be able to access it if it was released soft launch or beta in USA. So phone type is going to be a big thing. If you think about what who the investors are within, I think it was the stage type B, A, C. Some funding that they did, crowdfunding. Um, Android were one of the people who were putting some investment into Niantic stock so if you're going to that it may be that android does have an advantage and one of the ways that android has a further advantage uh, is that you can download most games by their apk file so this can be done by downloading off sites like apk pure apk mirror having an android phone will allow you to do that if it gets soft launched in another country doesn't matter you can usually open it one thing to look out for though is, and I hope they don't do this, if they do do that and it's specific to one country, Walking Dead, our world, had this very good system where for them, if is that they, um, any people who downloaded an APK in another country, it looked at your location and said, sorry, you're not able to use it. It kind of had a block on it in game. So they may choose to do that if it comes out. But if they don't, I always think Android is the best to go for because APKs come out really quick. And sometimes you can have games way before, like there's a game that I'm going to be playing in a minute on the channel, um, which is called Trainer Carnival. And it, it's it's basically like Pokemon mixed with, um, mixed with, what's it called? Mixed with like a, an MMO RPG and uh, just a kind of typical getting shards and pieces to form different things, so different Pokemon. So it's it's kind of a grind game, but it's got Pokemon in, so I like Pokemon, so I'm playing it. Um, but you can get these, like, the year, like sometimes a year before some of these games released, like this, I think, is released in Asia, and therefore I've got early access to it. So that's one thing to think about in terms of, you know, capabilities. Obviously, iPhone and Samsung, they're, they're pretty much the same. They'll, they'll keep in line with technology and each other so i always just say if you're going to pick a phone android is usually better than iphone if you want to get that initial you know go and when the game comes out so that's enough about the actual phones other things you want as i mentioned before battery life is so critical playing these games your ar so you're going around you know different areas if you live rurally, there's not going to be many charging spots. So if you live in town, you can usually, there's plugs as you go in for a coffee or something. You can sit at a poke stop, chill out, and charge your phone whilst playing. Uh, if you don't have that, then you're going to end up losing, ruining your battery. And it cuts, it cuts trips short. It's really annoying when you've like walked 20k up the mountain and then you on the way back your phone isn't clocking those you know those those distances those walks uh, the steps counted because you've just not got any battery so i definitely recommend this as a charger uh so definitely purchase a charging bank i purchased two because just in case one fails you know <laughs> you, you get it when you when you're out and, and it's happened many times before because these are usually the life on a lot of other ones I have had has been so poor. This is an anchor. So this is by far the best charging bank I have ever used. Every other one has either dies, has a fault with it. It's usually if I drop it as well. Um, this I've dropped many times. You know, if you look closely, there's a lot of scuffs and marks on it where I've dropped it. It still works as good as it did as soon as I bought it. So you can go on Amazon and you, the temptation is to buy a cheap one uh, because you know some of them are quite highly priced and it depends on how much you're going to use it but I always would recommend spend more because you're probably going to end up spending more in the long run because I've, I've had like three of the, the lower quality ones just die on me but I think mine isn't that one, it's not 20, it is, I think it's 10. 10,000 or whatever it is. Um, so this one has a charger which you can charge at home. Charges overnight. It can take a, a fair while, uh, but I think most of them do. You've got two USB slots, which is so important because 
if you're going out with people, this is going to be a game that's probably going to have, um, you know, you'll be going out with other people maybe to complete take down curse vaults, raids, things like that. And this allows me to charge at the same time as somebody else because there's nothing worse than both being on 10% and you're both like trying to survive, swapping it back and forth, keeping your battery at 10%. So having two slots definitely helps. And this has probably like enough charges to charge my phone five times over. Plenty more that I really need going out. Um, and it's not too heavy, fits quite nicely in my pocket. And it's, it's definitely by far the best thing that I've bought. The other thing with that that you want to get is plenty of these. Charging cables. Hard charging cables are massive. Um, and just, you know, if your battery runs out, a lot of things now have USB slots where you can charge things. Most of the buses that I get on have charging slots. So if you run out on your charging banks, usually having a good USB charger can, can help you keep your battery alive. But one of the things to remember is there are different types of cables. This is a lightning cable. So Snow Kids Type C. That's obviously for an Android phone. Um, you, you spend as much as you can on these because the better they are, the faster they really do. And if you, the worst thing about USB cables because they're usually not as powerful as a battery um, at charging. You can charge and play a game and still your battery runs down, but having a lightning fast cable, usually I've found that I can play games at the same time and my battery does start to increase. So getting something like that is a massive you know, must if you are somebody who goes out and grinds for you know, a good whole day. And I think the final thing that you'll probably wanna take with you, something that I don't have on me today, but I do have one that I just share with my partner, uh, is an Apple Watch. So, and you can fit it up with um, some of the, I think you can do it with Fitbits now. Um, so, but having something like that, if you uh, walk, you know, you're not gonna always have your phone on you when you're at work or things like that, but you may do lots of walking about. And obviously with Pokemon Go, you've got this system where every week the kilometers add up and you get rewards based on how many you walk. You're gonna have eggs to walk. You're probably gonna have something like that in Wizards Unite, something, some way that you know you have to walk to get the rewards. And having an Apple Watch may, means that you get every step that you do throughout the day counted towards your rewards. And that's a big help because I can't take my phone with me whilst I'm at work. And I only walk back and forth to a room in my when I'm doing sessions at work. But there's still like you're doing that countlessly throughout the day, walking to the printer to get stuff, and they all add together. I don't walk around with my phone, so they're all kind of missed. So that's one thing that I recommend definitely. You know, investing in. I don't have to do Apple Watch. Obviously, things like Fitbits for the Android, and they probably are going to be made compatible with Wizard Unite, being that you've got that Android investment. Um, Samsung investment anyway. So we, we probably it's gonna be something that will help you clock those kilometers way better. Um, I remember in the old days that you know, people were coming up with fixes where like you attach your phone to a fan and it goes round and you're clocking kilometers. So <laughs> you could just do that, but, or build a train set. That's that's the final thing is actually get have a train set that you know goes at a good speeds like nine miles per hour keep it safe don't break the speed limit and you'll get now don't do that it's just, just a waste of energy for the train unless you don't tie it up with playing with your kids that yeah that's what i'm gonna do so there's some of the fixes that i think just things that are definitely you need to think about if you've thought of any more definitely pop them in the description below things that you found you've had to take out with you when you're going on pokemon go hunts on top of that though what i want to talk about is next it's just what I, how I'm preparing for it. So obviously I have done the, th I've got the things that I've shown you. So I've got a, a nice phone that will, you know, hopefully be good enough to handle the, the Wizards Unite game. I've got lightning speed cables. I've got two chargers to make sure that I, I, I don't um, run out of battery. But there's things obviously being that I'll be YouTubing and putting out some of this content for you guys. Uh, I've, I've invested in, in things to help me do that you know i'll say that, that that these things that i've been able to purchase have come through i can only afford these because of the the money that i do make from the channel so every time you hit a like button every time you hit a share or just because you stay subscribed and you watch my videos every minute that you watch it 
increases the amount of income that I get and that I can put into hopefully making better and better content. So I'm constantly investing in things like a new mic was purchased last year. Um, and, and right now, this year, I've purchased, I've invested in a camera. So this is the, a, uh, the Sony A6000. And it's pretty sweet. So it's got like 4K. It's good in terms of FPS. So you'll get some maybe like some cool slow-mos. Um, it's just nice clear picture. It's adaptable in different light settings and things like that. I can do movies or I can take pictures. But mainly I'm going to be filming with this. It's got attachable lenses so I can make sure that I've got the right zoom on me. I also have like, I think it has like face recognition as well. It picks and auto zooms onto the things you want it to. So it's a really nice piece of kit. It cost me 370 quid with, but came with this lens as well, which is about actually just sold for 115 quid. So 265 pound for that is a really, really good bargain. Thank you Gumtree and the man who was selling that. Um, so that's definitely going to be something that's going to improve the vlogging that I'm going to do. I'm probably going to have to do a test run. I have done a vlog before, like way back in the day, like probably like two years ago with Pokemon Go. And it's sort of, it's, I found it all right. It's not too difficult to do. It's a lot more editing though. And obviously I'm not just sat down talking. So it's a different type of, um, different type of editing. And another thing is, is it's kind of different because right here I'm just on my own. But doing it in front of other people, you do have to be, you know, I, 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 last year, like two years ago, I think I like nearly hit somebody with my camera because I was just focusing on what I'm saying. So that's one thing to kind of look out for that I, I, I'm going to be putting out content like that as a tester. The other thing on top of the mic, which I just bought. Now, granted, I bought this because I won a, a £1,000 bet on Saturday. Which was pretty cool and I bought invested in a Rode mic pro so this is attachable to my um, to my camera and it's, it's worked separately from it so I I, uh, I mean I have to in, the, in that I have to turn it on the new plus pro plus I think turns on automatically when you turn the screen on so hopefully I don't get too many mishaps and probably need to practice with it of making sure that I'm recording the sound as well and it also comes with a dead cat, are they called? What a weird name. I think they're called dead cats. Something like that. Let's call it a dead cat. No, they're not, they're not telling me what I've got. Why didn't you say free dead cat? So I've got this, and this literally just came now in the post. Can't open it. And it's not too big. It's quite a nice size that means I'm not gonna because one of the things for me with, with my ME is that I can't usually hold heavy things for a long time before my arm just goes dead and doesn't have any energy to, to hold it anymore so light equipment is a massive thing for me I'm pretty sure it's called a dead cat I mean it makes sense it does look like a dead cat <laughs> let me just double check that are you called a dead cat? Dead cat. I'm just gonna get pictures of dead cats now. <laughs> Woo! I am so relieved that this is called a dead cat. Otherwise, that would have just been weird content to have on the channel. I'd probably have had to edit that out. So we've got, as you can see, really light, so light. It's literally about the same weight, less, it's about half the weight of this cup, so. That's going to be really cool. It attaches to my camera nice and easy. Just slots in like that. And then bang, wherever I direct it at, I'm picking up sound clear. Dead cat, cat will uh, you know, block out any of the wind noise that you get, that annoying which is really, really annoying when you're trying to record. So that's going to help with that. Big deal. I've got, my brother gave me this, I think for my birthday last year. Um, so it's crazy good tripod to have uh, because you can just attach it anywhere literally like you can just hook it on and then use them to prop it up to the angle you want so it's, it's really good um, and will definitely help me one of the things I am a little bit concerned about and I think I need to practice is being comfortable with leaving it but not being too far away so that somebody can steal it <laughs> right and a little bag to 
put my camera in and other stuff. I might actually have to invest in a bigger one because that probably only fits the camera. And I really, I'd, I need something that fits the mic as well. Unless the mic, mm, yeah, I probably have to invest in something bigger than that. So yeah, just having, for me, equipment that is light is a must. This is probably, this is a lot heavier than, but the thing is that it's heavy, but I can just, I can literally just wrap it around my arm. Like it will stick. So I could just, hey guys, say hi. The camera on. Yeah, that, that, it'll be fine. I'll just hook it onto me somewhere. Hook it around my neck or something. Just watch I don't strangle myself. So I'm fully prepared for the re release of this game now. In terms of equipment, I don't think there's anything more I want to buy or need to buy. Um, I do want to get a new one though. I kind of want to get a new one. I'm hoping they bring out like the Pokemon Go Plus version of a wand. Yeah, I'd buy it. <laughs> would I use it? Hell yeah, I would. <laughs> I don't care what anybody thinks. It'd be that thing like, well, no, you're, you're, you're serious if you've got a wand on you and you press a button on it and then you capture magical beasts or maybe like it's audio based so that you say things into it whilst doing the right movement and then it clicks. That would be cool. Wizards Unite, find it, please. Okay, well, that's probably everything for this video. Just uh, just a little catch up, obviously, on hopefully it's been helpful for you guys. You, can, you guys can think about, you know, investing in stuff before the game comes out so you don't have to like wait for your battery to come before you're limited to only going out on two hour journeys and having to come back charge up go away come back charge up so hopefully some of that has been helpful and hopefully you're excited for some of the content that you're going to be seeing on this channel regular wizards unite content based on you know just like you see in hopefully to the level of like reversal trainer tips that kind of level of grind but obviously I work, but I only work three days. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it's going to be interesting. That's why I want to do a few testers. So you'll probably see some Pokemon Go outgoing in the in the next month for sure. Okay. Well, that's all for this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with future content. That's all from me. See you soon.